Hello everyone. We are going to have an overview of what Econ 318 is going to cover this semester. We are essentially going to learn one method of solving some economic problems, or say problems in the context of economics. And this method is called stochastic dynamic programming. So let me first try to explain the meaning of this um, phrase over here. So what do we mean by programming? Now, these days when we mention programming, we think about coding, computer programming, language. But that's not the meaning of programming in this sentence over here. And this is just a traditional a phrase, a word for optimization. So programming is just uh, optimization. Or you can say find optimal solution. So you can also say this seminar is about how to use stochastic dynamic optimization to solve some problems. Okay. Now, what do we mean by dynamic? We're going to see an example. Here, dynamic simply means solve optimization problems one time period at a time. So solve problem, solve a problem usually involving Uh, many periods of time, many periods of time, one period at a time. So called dynamically. And we will see an example. And what do we mean by stochastic? Um, stochastic over here simply means some randomness, uncertainty is involved uncertainty is involved. But first, we will start with examples of dynamic programming. And after a few weeks, then we will introduce so-called random perturbations inside. And we will actually cooperate uncertainty into the models. So that's roughly what this course is about. Okay. So in calculus, we all learned how to do optimization problems. So what's the difference between dynamic optimization and the usual common sense kind of optimization? Let me use an example to illustrate over here. Okay. Um, the difference between the common multivariable optimization and the dynamic optimization. Here is a very good example indeed. Assuming that um, a student called Sarah has 16 hours spread over five day week, a five day week to solve a number of practice problems for the GRE test. Okay. So on any given day, if she spends x hours, she can solve root x problems. So for example, if she skips the first four days and just work on these problems during the last day, then she can solve four problems, right? And that's what we have. But on the other hand, she has choices. She can spread these 16 hours over five days, hoping that she actually can solve more problems. So the question is, how much time should she spend on each day so that she can solve the maximum number of problems in these five days? Now, if we use the multivariable optimization method from calculus three, and this is how we're gonna do it. So 
we have five days one two three four five and we spend x1 hours during the first day x2 hours second day x3 x4 and x5 okay. and then we say we maximize over the choice of these variables okay and x1 x5 bigger than or equal to zero right and then on the first day we have x1 and then x2 then x3 then x4 and then x5 okay. subject to we have a condition over here and then that's x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 is equal to 16. and if you look at this problem we are optimized over five variables they are all together and this is from calculus 3 and we know we how to solve it we use the Lagrange multiply method right so that's it now what is the dynamic programming method we actually do the following thing we look at one period problem okay it's really you can say the last one the last period okay um, you only have one day and you have x hours total And then you ask how much time you're going to spend in just one period in order to maximize the number of problems you can solve. And then you can do the following thing. You can say, okay, I'm going to spend y hours. And y must be in the interval of 0 and x because y must be less than x, bigger than 0. This is the hours available x hours available uh, in total and then you can say i have only one period so just one y to look at y is less than or equal to x and bigger than or equal to zero if you spend y hours and this is how many problems you can solve now if you look at this problem over here it's easy to do because um, we know root of y is an increasing function okay this is root of y right this x is fixed so you will see that the solution over here we're going to call the solution over here v1 of x one over here means we have one period x that's the total hours of um, how much time we have and to solve this one over here we actually see that our optimal method is choose y to be x y to be x because that will give you the maximum value over here so your solution over here y is equal to x is optimal solution so it's root x and that's um, the situation with one period now what if we have more than one period and then we start from v1 of x let's say we have two periods and we still have x hours available you see we cannot use a just a number right like 16 we have to use somehow a parameter over here and then we have two periods okay and then what are we going to do we will say well i know how to solve one period of problem so i need to just select or to choose 
y for the first period. And then x minus y is for the second. For the second. Okay. And then this is what we have. So when we have two periods and we have a total number of hours, x hours, and then we maximize over still y. y is between x and 0. And here we choose y and we have x minus y for the last period. And for the first period, we have a root of y. And after that, we have v1 of x minus y. Because we are going to assume for the last day, we are going to actually use the optimal strategy to solve the problem. And from here, since we solved v1 of x, is root x, so v1 of x minus y is square root of x minus y. And then if you look at this problem, this is still an optimization problem over one variable. And x is your parameter. And solve this problem, we know how to do it. Take the derivative set it to zero, right? And we can actually see y over here is going to be x over two. This is optimal. Of course, we know how to check that we will see the second order derivative at this place over here. It's negative. And so we have a maximum over there. And then we plug it in, we have v2 of x is going to be square root of x over 2 plus square root of x minus x over 2. And that's going to be root 2, root x. That's the one we have. So now we know how to solve a two-period problem. And then we can solve v3. So v3 of x, you will see now we see a pattern. We try to see how much to actually spend during the first day. And then we have this many problems solved. But then we have two days left, and that's what we're going to do. Okay. So if you keep going, eventually you can solve the problem. If you have 16 hours available, and that's going to be maximum y less than like 16, bigger than or equal to 0. And here you have y and then plus v4, and you have 16 minus y. Because you have solved v1, v2, v3, v4, so you can actually solve v5. And this would be our solution. Okay. And this method is called dynamic programming. Dynamic programming. And you see that we don't, to, we don't need to use partial derivatives. Most of the time, we just have one variable to optimize over. And in general, of course, you can see, suppose you have n period, you have Vn of x is equal to maximum y less than or equal to x, bigger than or equal to 0, and root y plus v n minus 1, and you have x minus y. And this one over here, you see, we, we have, again, this is so-called recursive formula, or recursive relation between v n and v n minus 1. Okay. So this is the method we're going to use to solve essentially all the problems we have in this course. All right, um, that's all.